Hey, Ray Del Vecchio here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com. Right now you're looking at the WordPress 2023 theme. Obviously this doesn't look like anything special, but we're gonna completely customize this with full site editing. And here's a sneak preview of what we're gonna create, which is a wedding videography website. Now this is my second tutorial using the WordPress 2023 theme. There's gonna be a lot of similarities to that one, but we're also using a couple of new features in this one. So even if you've seen the last one, I think you're gonna enjoy this. And before I begin, make sure you check out the links in the description below. You can download a copy of this guide that you're looking at here. And this is all of the customizations we're gonna go through today. I'm using it as the playbook for this tutorial. If you don't have WordPress set up right now, you can get started with my two recommended website hosts. And that's HostGator and SiteGround. HostGator is the most affordable for beginners. And I started with them back in 2009. And then if you're looking for better WordPress tools out of the box, you can pay a little bit extra for SiteGround hosting. Pretty much every website that I've created over the last decade has been on one of these two website hosts. So I'll include tutorials in the description below on how to get started with both of them, along with a previous full site editing tutorial and other links that'll help you out. So without further ado, let's get started. This is the dashboard screen immediately after installing WordPress, and we have our welcome message. We can dismiss that. The dashboard gives you a quick overview of your WordPress installation, and you might want to look at the version number, which is 6.1.1, and it shows us which theme we have installed, which is the 2023 theme. So if you don't have that by default, you can go over to Appearance Themes and see if it's installed or activated, and if it's not, you can click the Add New button and search it out. But right now, it should come pre-installed as long as you're installing WordPress in 2023. This theme is what gives you full site editing capability, which we're gonna use. The first step that I'm gonna do is upload all the assets that we're gonna to use to customize this website. So we can do that by going over to the media section and I will open up the folder that has all the assets here, which by the way, you can download this from the tutorial guide. So grab that guide and there's a link in there that will give you all of these assets, which include the background image, the font that we're gonna use for the logo, the Photoshop files, the color palette, and all the photos in the video. So let me drag and drop all of these images in the background video. And these are all uploading now. Once I start doing the design, I'll be able to use the media library. Another thing that I like to do is put the infrastructure of the website in place. I'm just gonna publish a handful of posts and pages. That way we have some content that we see in the editor window as we begin customizing the design. So let me jump over to the pages right now. And WordPress comes preloaded with these two pages, a sample page, which has a little bit of content in here, just to show you the different elements that you can use to build your website. So this is a quote block. If you just start typing, you're gonna have a paragraph block. So I'm gonna make this sample page the about page. We could change the title here. You want to also look at the URL on the right hand side. So once you publish a page, WordPress is going to generate the URL based on whatever title you set. But after it's published, it's not going to change. So if you want to reset that URL, you have to manually do it after it's published. So I'm going to change this sample dash page to about. And just note that you don't really ever want to do this on your live website after you have a post or a page around for a while. If you do, you're going to have to redirect it. I'll set that. We'll update this page and then let me jump back to the pages section and I'm going to add five more pages. So we're going to do a home page, which this is no content here. We're just going to use this to build a custom home page layout, which you'll see in a few moments here. I'm going to create a videos page and this is pretty much going to act as the blog. We'll publish that. Let's go back to the pages section and I'm going to add an FAQ page. And I got some content here that I'll paste in. Now, FYI, whenever you're pasting in content from a different program, I normally like to do control shift V, which is pasting the values only. If you're pasting from something like Microsoft Word, you might copy in some random formatting and things get a little funky. Now, in this instance, I have two lines here within this paragraph block. I want to separate these titles from the answers. So I will need to just hit backspace and then enter. And that's going to bring it to a new block. I'm going to finish that up with the rest of these. You can see here, you can change these titles to headlines or headings. And here's a list of the most popular blocks. So you can organize your content into columns, groups. They have a block for buttons. We'll dig into that a little bit more in the template editor. So let me just transform these to headings and you have different levels of heading. So I'm going to make this an H4. The title's usually an H1. Let me update that for the rest of these. Let's publish this page. And I got two more that I want to create. 
One of them is going to be a contact page. And I'm also going to add a contact form to this at the end once we are done building the templates. We'll keep that blank for the time being. And the last one's going to be the pricing page. So let me paste in this content here. Right now, it's all paragraph blocks, but we're going to style it. This should be a list, except for this last line here. Let me move that to a new paragraph. And I'm going to take this paragraph block and transform it to a list. And that'll give us our bullet points. And then I got three packages made up here. So I'm going to turn each package into a heading. We'll keep this at the H2 level. And then I want to transform these into bullets as well. And I'm going to make these bold so they stand out a little bit more. Let me see if this bold transformation sticks when we transform this over to a list. And it looks like it does. So let me update that with these other two packages. And I'm also going to change the background color for these descriptions so they stand out. But before I do that, I want to set the color palette so I'm easily able to select that color instead of manually copying and pasting some color into there or using a color picker. So let's publish this as is right now, and we will go back to it once we start building out our template and our styles. Now I'm just going to go ahead and add some posts, which for each one of these, I used a specific format where I'm using the couple's name as the title. And this is going to appear on our video page, which we're going to set in just a moment here with our WordPress settings. So let me add the title. I'm just going to make up some fake names here. You see how creative I am. <laughs> and then we can also add a featured image. So we're going to jump over to the post settings here. If you are clicking on an individual block, you'll see the settings for the block in that other tab. But the post settings are for this entire blog post. This is where we set the post featured image. You can also use categories. So for instance, maybe you do beach weddings, travel weddings, destination weddings. You can create categories for each type of wedding style or however you want to categorize your work. I'm just going to leave this blank for now to keep it simple. But we're going to set our featured image. And since we already have it uploaded, we can go to our media library. And I'm not going to really build out this page with content. But the one thing that I do want to show you is how to embed a YouTube video. And it couldn't be any easier. All you have to do is click the plus button. And there's a block for YouTube. Just search that out. And all you have to do is paste in the YouTube URL, which is the youtube.com slash watch with your video ID. If you go ahead and embed that, I just picked a very popular wedding video. I think this one has over a million views. So let me publish this. And I'm going to go ahead and create a handful more of these posts with the feature and image. And we can take a quick look at this post page right now to see how it looks without any customizations to our template. So you can see how they have the featured image displayed here. I think I'm going to remove that because I want the video to be front and center, not the image. But we are going to display this featured image on our homepage layout. You'll see how we bring all this together into a much better looking design. I'm back here on the post page. I got a handful of posts set up. And I also trashed the Hello World, that initial blog post that gets pre-installed. You can hover and delete any of these if you want. It'll go up into this trash section here where it'll automatically be deleted after, I think, 30 days. And then if you have any drafts here before they're published, you'll also see that as a menu option. The next thing that I'm going to quickly run through are the WordPress settings. So let's jump to the settings page where I can set my title and tagline. We can scroll down and save it. You can also set your date format and time zone here. The next section is the reading section. This is going to be where we set our home page. So you can see why I created the pages first. And that's because we want to select which page is going to be set as our home page. Obviously, I just created a home page. But for the post page, most times I'll set this up as the blog page. But in this case, since it's videography, we're going to set the blog to the videos page. And this is going to affect which templates are running these pages. So let's hit the save button here. The last section that I want to look at, which right now it's already set for us, but it's the permalinks. I usually set this to post name. If you have any of these other formats, I, I do recommend you change it to post name at the beginning. If you already have your site out there, I wouldn't mess with this because, again, you might have to do those forwarders to keep people from going to a broken link. But post name is the most concise option where it just translates the title of the page of the post into a URL. We're done now with the infrastructure setup, and we can move over to the template editor and start customizing our design. We can get there from going to the appearance editor, and this is just going to bring up our template editor. Up here in the top center, this is the template that we're currently editing, 
and we're gonna jump into this browse all templates in just a moment here. Instead of just pointing and clicking on here, if you prefer to use the list view, you can enable this option and it's gonna give you your entire template layout here where you can see the hierarchy of every level here, every template part. So you got the header template part, the footer and the group, which is the main content. And then when you select any of these items, if you look at the bottom left here, you're going to see the hierarchy of where that block that you have selected is within the entire template. That's a high level overview of the tools that you're going to use to build your templates. Now, the other option to kind of standardize our design is the styles button up here. That's the circle with the black and the white halves. So if we select that, you're going to bring up your styles. And in the last tutorial, I showed you how to pick a predefined style. So if you do this browse styles, 2023 has 11 built in here that you can select from. But for this tutorial, I'm going to go for a completely custom style. I'll hit the back button here and we can go through these options. You're basically setting the wording on your site, the typography, the colors, and the layout. And then you can also set your defaults for individual content blocks that will be used throughout the template or the pages in the posts. Let's start with the typography and I'll jump into the text. One thing that I haven't looked at is how to hook this up with a third party service like Google fonts, where you have more fonts available. That's how a premium theme like Divi operates, which I use on a lot of my client websites. They give you more options for the font. But for this, I'm just going to select enter, which gives us a slightly different look than what we had before. And then I'll go back and jump into the headings. I want to make these bold by default. So I'll change the appearance here. And then I'm going to go into the buttons. We will set this to bold as well. And then medium size, which right now it's asking for the pixel size. If I click that button here, we can just select from predefined sizes. So I'll go medium and bold for the button. And we can jump into the colors now. So let me bring up the color palette that I have. I generated this color palette from the site coolers.co. This is my favorite site to do color palettes. And then you can export it and grab all the important information like the hex code, the RGB, if you're using Photoshop. I'm gonna load in these two teal colors, which are the primary ones, and then one of the red colors as a contrast, which we're gonna use for the button. So let me go into the palette here and I will set these colors. And one thing I'm not a huge fan of with WordPress is that you don't get the edit uh, pop-up box when you click on these. You have to click this three dot icon, then edit colors, then click into it. So it's kind of a little bit of a roundabout process. I do wish that they would make that a little bit simpler. Now I'm going to set the contrast color to that red. And like I mentioned, if you want to grab that PDF with the color palette along with all the other assets, download that from the link in the description below. For the primary color, I'm going to set this to a dark gray. I'm going to do 333. And then for the secondary color, I'm going to do the lighter teal. And to finish up with the tertiary color, we're going to do our darker teal color. So now we got that set, we'll click the done button here. And this just makes everything easier because now we can pick these colors when we're customizing any areas and we want to set the color instead of having to copy and paste those hex codes in there. And if I click the back button here, you can see how all of our elements were automatically updated by what we did here, but I'm going to change a few of these. I just want that red color for the button, but the text we're going to make are gray. Then we can go to the links and this is automatically set to our contrast color, but I also want to set our hover color to that as well. So that doesn't get overridden by another style. We'll go to our headings and we'll set this to our black or our dark gray. And then our buttons, we can set our text color to white and then the background color to our contrast. So that's all I'm gonna do with the typography and the colors. I'm just gonna show you one quick fix here with the blocks. So we're gonna make our buttons uppercase. So if I search for the button block, you notice that they have the group block, which is the buttons block, and then the individual button block. I'm not quite sure which one of these is better to set, but let me go into the button block, which is the individual one. And I'll jump into the typography and this is where I can set the letter casing. So I'm gonna make this uppercase. So let's save this right now. And when we hit the save button, you're gonna see a few checkboxes here depending on what you edited in the template editor. So right now we only made changes to our custom styles. So that's all you see here. If we added anything to this template here, it would tell you that we're updating the page template. Or if we made any changes to a template part, such as the header or the footer, 
it would also show over here because that would apply across all the templates. So you're going to see that as we continue to build this and save different areas of our template editor. Let's just go ahead and save our custom styles right now. And I want to start building our homepage layout. So to do that, we can go to the browse all templates. And this is a list of all the templates that we have available that run our entire website. We were just looking at the page template, which shows a single page. You also have templates here for search results, archive templates, which are your category or tag pages, single template, which is for single blog posts. You got this home template, which you would think is what we're editing to do the home page. But the confusing part about this is that the setting that we just saw, which is setting a static home page, that means that home page is going to be treated like a separate page. And then this home template is just displaying our posts, which right now our posts are displaying on the videos page. I kind of felt like an idiot describing that in the last video. Same applies here. <laughs> I wish they would have some kind of better name for this, like the blog template instead of the home template or the post template, something like that. But just keep that in mind when you're building this out. Let's start by adding a new template and we're going to use the front page template to build our home page. So you can see how things look on here with our blog posts loaded in with content. And we'll start by opening up the list view. So the first thing I want to do is add the background image, that repeating background image across the entire website. And this is something that I would be able to do easily with CSS code. I didn't know how to do it before filming this tutorial. It kind of goes to show you that even someone like myself, I'm relearning things even after having using WordPress for going on 15 years now. So what we need to do is add a cover block. So I'm going to do insert before you just got to click that three dot icon and you can do insert before it's going to put in a paragraph block and we can type this slash to choose a block and I'm going to search out the cover block and this is normally what gives you an image background with text overlaid on top of it but in this case we're just going to put that image background as a repeated image and we're going to put in every other block as a nested element within this cover block. So let's go to the media library and select our background image, which is this one, which you can barely see here, but obviously when we have it repeated, you'll notice it in the background. It's stretching out that really, really small square to this entire space. So what we need to do is go up to the cover block, set this to a repeated background, just enable that and you'll see our stripes. And it's dark right now and that's because of the overlay opacity. So we'll make this zero. And the last thing that I want to update on here is the padding on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to click this chain link icon to unlink the padding so we can set the top, the right, the bottom, the left separately. I want to keep the left and the right at zero. And I'm going to make the top and the bottom one just to give us a little more space, which you don't really notice here until we add content in there. But I just want to set this first. And now that we have this cover block done, I'm going to use this on all the templates because I want this background site wide. So instead of going through this process manually, what I'm going to do is save this cover block as a reusable block. So if I right click this, we have two options here, either create template part or create reusable block. I'm going to do a reusable block and I'll just name this repeating background. We can save that reusable block and you'll see how we use it on future pages. The important part about using this reusable block is that since we're going to embed content within this block, I have to convert this to a regular block. Otherwise, all the content that I put in this homepage layout is going to be saved in that reusable block, and we don't want that to happen. So this is really just a starting point. So we'll convert our reusable block to a regular block, which brings it back to our cover element. So I'm going to drag and drop the header group and the footer into the cover block. You can hold the shift key to select all of them. And then when you drag and drop, you're going to see where this is going to end up on the hierarchy by this blue line here. So right now it's showing that it is nested within that cover. So now we got this whole website with our repeating background image. And I can just go ahead and delete this empty paragraph block at the bottom here, which is our title on the cover block. So let's begin work from top to bottom. We'll start on the header. And I'm going to expand every section here. So we have a header, a group, a row, and then we have our site title and our navigation. So what I'm going to do is replace the site title with the logo and I'm going to add a second row. So let me do insert before and I'll add a row block. I'll set the justification to center and then I can hit the plus button to add an image block within here. So we'll go to our media library and load in our header logo. You can also link this up to the home page if you like. And then in row two here, I'm going to delete the site title. We're going to keep the navigation 
but I do want to create a navigation menu because right now this is just loading in our pages, but it's in no particular order. So in order to pick the pages that we like, we'll just create a custom menu. I will also set this justification. Right now I just set it to center on the navigation, but it looks like we have to do that from the row level. So now we'll have our center navigation. Let me jump back to the navigation block here and I can create a new menu. And this is just gonna create a blank menu. So we have to add these menu items one by one. So let me hit the plus button and we can search them out. So I'll just search for the home page for the first link. And I'll do this with the rest of our pages here. So now we got that menu done. So this is a good time to save the template. We're not done with it yet, but I just wanna show you that when you hit the save button, as I mentioned previously, you're gonna see the areas of the template that you're editing. It tells us that we're changing our front page template here. We're updating our header template part, which is used in multiple templates, and we're editing a new navigation menu, the header navigation. So let's click save on all this and we'll continue working on this template. The next thing that we're gonna add is another cover section. So let's minimize this header template part. And I wanna insert after on this one, right in between the header and the group element. So I'll do insert after and search out the cover block again. And this is gonna be a full width section with our background video. So let's go to the media library and I have this MP4 video here, which I optimized. I got all of these stock photos and this video from the site pexels.com, which you can see that in the file name. I'll link that up in the description below as well. But this was a very large and about 30 or 35 second video. I down converted it and made it five seconds long and changed the speed so it's a little bit slower. And that got us down to 198 kilobytes. So this is not a crazy big video file that's going to slow down the website too much. It's pretty much the same size as a large image. So let's select that. So right now there's an overlay color on this and we're going to set that to one of our teal colors on our color palette. So let's jump into the overlay. And I'm going to choose the darker teal color. And just to give us more contrast with the text, I'm actually going to make this even darker. So I can either generate a hex code or just manually select here based on this teal color palette here. So I think somewhere around this area looks good. I still want it to have that tint of teal. I'm going to update the overlay opacity as well. We'll set this to either 70 or 80. I think 70 looks good. I'm gonna set the padding to two on this, and I'm gonna also set the minimum height of the cover. That way it doesn't get shrunk down too much. So this will be 500 pixels, gives us a little bit bigger of an area to work with. And then we can add our title and some text here. So I'm gonna use this as the title. Right now this is a paragraph block. We can transform that to a heading. And because this is our main keyword, I'm gonna make this an H1 heading. This isn't quite as large as I expected, so let me see if we need to fix that. But first, I'm going to change the text to white. It's given us a warning here that the color combination may be hard for people to read. I think part of that is there's no background color set here. I'm not sure if they can tell what the background image color is. My guess is they don't, but I mean, this looks fine to me. I don't know if this typography is set to large, if I can reset this potentially. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I reset the typography. I wonder if that was set manually on the paragraph block and it didn't switch over when we converted to a heading. But this is the size that I want. And then we're going to add a paragraph block right below that. We can just hit the enter button to add a new block. And I'll just add a few lines of text. Once again, we'll center this and change the color on the text to white. Let me select both of these paragraph blocks and see if this works. I don't know if it's just going to change the highlighted text there. Now nah, it looks like it worked for all the blocks. But yeah, some, sometimes selecting multiple blocks with paragraphs looks a little bit funky on there. This is another reason why I usually like selecting on the list view as opposed to the visual editor. Just gives you a little bit more control. You know exactly what you're selecting. And the last thing that we're going to add on here is a button. So we should be able to see our button styles. Hopefully this works correctly. So that looks good. We got the correct colors and we have our uppercase text. I'm gonna center this button, which I'm actually centering the buttons block, not the button block, which is that individual block we mentioned before. And I do want a little extra space under this paragraph. So you could probably do this in a few ways. You can add a spacer block. You could also adjust the dimensions of either this paragraph block or the buttons block. I think the easiest method is just adding a spacer block. 
So I'll search that out and you can set the pixel height of that spacer, which will do 35 pixels. So that section came together really quickly. Next up, we can jump into the group element. So let me minimize the cover and I'll expand the group because this is kind of like a portfolio. I'm going to change this title to recent clients. I don't know if you just saw, but this is an H1 element. We're going to make this an H2 because we use the H1 above. Let me set the margin on this as well to three. Right now, the margin bottom is set to four. I'm going to move that down a little bit because I think there's just a little bit too much space underneath. That evens it out between the top and the bottom. We'll jump into the next block, which is the query loop block. And this is what generates our blog posts. Now, I want to test something out on the live website. Let me save this right now. Let's view our live website. And yeah, on here, because the home page is set as a static page, our query loop is not actually generating the correct blog posts. That might be a little confusing, but that's a setting on this query loop block right here, inherit query from template. So if we disable this, it's just going to import our most recent blog posts. The reason you might want to use this is say you're creating the category template by having this inherit query from template, it would only show blog posts within a specific category. Or if you were doing tags, it would do the same thing there because this is the home template. Like I said, we're going to disable this. So everything looks good here. We can jump into the query loop elements and we have our post template, which that's going to show us our post featured image, the title and the rest of these elements here. I'm only going to keep the title and the date. So I'm going to delete the post excerpt as well as the pagination down here to go to the newer posts or the older posts. That's usually a feature that you would have on the blog page, but I just want to highlight three images here. So we'll remove that. We'll jump into the post featured image. The only thing I'm going to add to this image is a border. So let me jump into the post featured image block. And if I scroll down, we can adjust our border here. I'm going to make this 10 pixels. And we'll also set this to our teal color. I want to adjust the opacity as well. So if we jump into this using this second selector here, you can change the opacity. So let me do about 50%, somewhere around there. We can next move on to the post title. I'm going to center this and make it bold. Now, I, I thought this was going to be bold because we set our headings to bold. Again, don't know if that's a bug with the styles options that we edited up here. But sometimes you got to overwrite these things manually. So now we got that set nicely. And the only other thing I'm going to do here is center the post date. I'm not going to change anything else with this. The one thing I do want to change is the post title heading level. So let me drop this down to H4. That gives us a little more contrast with this heading up here. And because we deleted the pagination, I'm going to delete the spacer from the post template. So I'll just delete that. And if we scroll down further, this is another pre-built section within this template that we don't want. This is the columns block, so I'll just completely delete this as well. The one thing I do want to add is a button to go to the portfolio. So if people want to see more, they could just jump right to that page. Let me add that after the spacer, and then maybe I'll adjust the spacer height. So we'll do insert after. Search out our buttons block, and I'll make this view portfolio. We'll center it. Let me just jump up to the button parent block there. And we can justify items center. And then let me go back to the spacer. And right now, um, I don't see anything set here. So maybe this is just a default value. But I think 35 is another good standard value to go with. The last thing I'm going to update on this template is the footer, which again, the header and the footer, they're going to apply to every single page. All I want to do is just add social media icons. So we have our footer, a group, a row with our site title and our site paragraph. So I could either add another row or I wonder if I could just add the social media icons block just directly under this group. Let me select that. Actually, let me select the row and I'll do insert before on this. Search out the social icons. I'll set this to justification center. I'm going to make these logos only and let me add a couple here. And just keep in mind that these won't show on your live website unless you add a link. So make sure you do link them up. If we click on that, this is where we can paste in the link. So I'm just going to do dummy links right now, but make sure you do add in that full link with the HTTPS. And I'll add in Pinterest and Facebook. And right now, they're obviously showing the standard colors for these social networks, but I want it to match our design, so I'm going to make these teal as well. 
In addition to that, I'm going to make them bigger so we can jump into the size. I'm going to do huge size. I want these to stand out. And then from the icon color here, this is where we can set our color. So let me do the darker teal for this. I forgot to add the links to these two, which is that's why they're transparent right now. So let me do that really quickly. And that should fix that issue. And we're good to go. So let me do another save here. It shows that we're saving our template as well as the footer section. And if we jump over to the live website, we'll see how everything looks on this. And there you go. There's our front page template completely done. We're back here on the templates page. And the next one we're going to open up is the page template. So this is running all the pages other than the home page. And we'll start by adding our reusable block. So let me open up the list view. And I'm going to insert before. And I think you could search for either reusable blocks or whatever you named it. So in this case, we named it background, repeating background. So when we search that out, we can just select it and it's good to go. All we got to do is hit this three dot icon and make sure that we convert to regular blocks. Because again, if we don't do this, whatever content we put in here as we're editing this would be saved to that reusable block. So let's convert it. And then we'll drag and drop our elements into that cover block. And then we can delete that paragraph. So we already got the header and the footer good on these. We're just going to jump right into the group block. And I can remove the comments. We don't need people commenting on our pages. And I'm also going to get rid of the featured image. So let's delete the post featured image. And because we only have one element in this group, I'm just going to get rid of that. I'll drag this out of the group and delete this group element. And then I want to go into the top level group and edit the margin. So right now we have a margin top set to three and the bottom is zero. I'm going to switch that up completely. I'm going to set the top to zero because we have a ton of space there. And I'm going to set the bottom to two, which gives us a little bit of room between our social icons and our post content. So all we're going to do here is make this bold and center. And that's going to be all the changes for this template. So let's go ahead and save them. And we can check out our live website with a couple of these examples. So let's go into the about page. Even though you don't have a featured image set within the template, you can just add it to the post content if you like. You'd probably want to put a picture on the about page. But for the FAQ page and the pricing page, I don't want pictures there. I just want that to be plain text. I'm going to do a little bit of a design on the pricing page. So let's jump into that right now. We can go back here to our dashboard and go to our pricing page. And I'm just going to add a background color to these paragraph items. So let's select the paragraph text below each headline. And we can set the background now to our teal. We'll do our secondary color. And I'll update that with the other two packages as well. These are really simple customizations, just using the color palette. I think they really look good. So let's go over here and reload our page and we can see that update. So everything looks good here. And now we can move on to our next template, which is going to be the one that runs our blog posts. And that's our videos page. Let's go back to the WordPress dashboard and we can jump into our theme editor. So I'll go back to the browse all templates. And we can jump into the home template. So we'll do the same process here of adding our reusable block, that cover block. We'll insert before. Make sure that we convert this to regular blocks and then drag and drop our elements into that. And then I'll expand and delete this paragraph. Then we can go into the group, which is our main content area. Just like the last template, I'm going to change the margin. Right now they have a margin top set to three and bottom set to five. So I'm going to set top to zero and the bottom to two. I'm going to change this heading text to our portfolio and then center it. And we can open up the query loop block. And on this, I'm just going to include the title. I'm not going to include the date or any of these other elements but I will keep the pagination. So let me open up the post template block and I'm just gonna delete everything except the featured image and the post title. I 
I am going to leave the spacer in because when this drops down to mobile, that will provide a little bit of space between these elements. So let's go into the post featured image. We'll do the same exact border that we put on the other one. It'll be 10 pixels and teal at about 50% opacity. And we got this last section that came with the 2023 theme. We'll just delete this. So I'll delete the spacer and the columns outside of this post template block. And then I'm going to go back into the post title and then center and make this bold. So let's save this and take a look at our live website. I also want to see if I can update the spacing on here because there's a lot of space between our title and our portfolio projects. Let's save this home template and take a look at it. And for the most part, this looks good. And the other thing you see here on the editor window, it only shows the first three posts. I have four posts created. So this will show, I don't know what, it, what the upper limit is of how many it'll show, but whatever that limit is, it'll obviously show the pagination if it extends into a second page or beyond that. Let's see if we can quickly fix this title margin issue. So let's go back to the editor and I'll select our heading here and we'll drop down to the margin. And yeah, you can see the margin bottom is set to four. I'm going to make that one. So that tightens it up. And let me just make the same change I made on the home page. I'm going to change this from H2 to H4. So it's a little bit smaller and more contrasting to our title. So that's all I got for this page, the home page. Let's save it. And we have one more template that we're going to work on, and that's the single post template. And much like the pages, this is going to be simplified. I'm not going to make any drastic changes to this. So let me go into this one, which has our video embedded. And you can see it's using the same format with our featured image. So let's move on to that template. We can go back to our Browse All Templates, and let's open the single template. We'll go through the same exact process, adding our cover background. Converting that to regular blocks. Dragging the elements into it, deleting the paragraph. I mean, you can see how the more infrastructure you build, the easier every next template gets to edit and customize. You're kind of building from your past work as opposed to doing everything from scratch. So let's scroll back up to the top here and expand our group, which is our main content area. I'm going to set the margin top to zero and the bottom to two. And it looks like there's some issue with this, the headers overlapping with the main content area. I don't know what's going on with that, but let me see if deleting this fixes it. I'm gonna delete the post featured image. And because now we only have one element in this group, I'll just drag it out of the group and then delete this group item. And it looks like that did fix our issue. I don't know why that was happening. That might, might've been another little bug, <laughs> but uh, let me go ahead and center and bold this post title. And you could leave comments if you want, to, want people to comment on it. But in this case, just to keep things nice and clean on this portfolio website, I'm going to delete the post meta and the comment section. And like I said, that's all I'm going to do on this one. So this was another quick customization using a minimal design. So let's refresh our page and see what our changes look like. Obviously, if you want to write some content or add a photo gallery, you could always do that within these blog posts. But for the most part, we have a really awesome website built from scratch with a custom design as opposed to using one of the pre-built themes. And now that brings me to this last page, the contact page. Let me finish off this by adding a contact form. And then I'm going to style that using CSS, which you can grab from the tutorial guide in the description below. Let's go back to the WordPress editor here. And we're going to add a plugin called Contact Form 7. So you can go to the plugin section and click add new, and then just search out contact, and it should be one of the first ones to pop up. It's one of the oldest contact form plugins on WordPress, and I use it on all of my client websites. Most of my clients are home service contractors, so they get a lot of email leads through these forms. So let's just activate this, and that's gonna create this menu item called contact here, and they automatically set you up with a contact form. So you can go into here and customize your contact form through these short codes and all of these elements that are available to you, like text, email, URL, telephone, text area, drop down menu, check boxes. You got a lot of ways to customize it. And then all that information that you collect in the form 
You can put into an email and send it to yourself through this mail tab. And if you'd like, you can also check this, which is going to send a second email. And you can use that to send a confirmation to the person that submitted the form. So I'm not going to go through all these customizations. You can customize your form however you like. But the pre-built form is usually good. You can go back to that contact menu and copy the short code. That's one way you can do it. You can insert a short code block. But contact form 7 also has a block built in. So if we go over to the contact page, you can just choose the contact form block. You can see it right here with their custom icon. And then you just select whatever contact form you want that you built out from that contact page. So let's update it. And you're going to see that it's a pretty plain form. In fact, in the last tutorial, I didn't go through any customizations on it. It's obviously functional, but it doesn't look that good. So that's what I wanted to fix with CSS. Now, if you're not familiar with CSS, basically all the customizations that you saw me go through today, that's something you would have to implement with CSS code, but they turn that into a visual user interface. Because the block editor kind of gets away from code, they want you to do everything visually. They eliminate the area where you were able to copy and paste CSS code, and that was under your Appearance Customize menu. If you have a theme that doesn't support block editing, you'll see that, but it's obviously missing from here but it's still there within your WordPress installation. You just have to access it from the URL directly. You can see here that your WordPress installation has this WP admin folder. And right now we're on edit.php. What you wanna do is replace that with customize.php. And if you load that page up, you should land on this page. And it tells you right here that your theme supports editing with blocks. They give you that little like warning message, but this is the section where you can paste in CSS code. So on the last page of that theme guide that you can download, I have CSS code that you can copy and paste into that section. And this is really two things. Obviously down here, you can see that this is styling contact form seven. I also had a couple of random issues with the block editor that I couldn't figure out how to do visually. So I fixed them on here. And let me see if I can show you those really quickly before we copy and paste that into it. So first off, we set our link colors to red, our red contrast color. But if you jump into here, you can see that this link example down here is set to one of our teal colors. So if I hit the inspect button, it'll bring you to the CSS code that is responsible for this design showing. And you can see that our red color setting is getting overwritten. So that's really what one of those lines in the CSS is for. The other one is for buttons. So let me see if I can recreate this. So with CSS, you don't just have access to the element itself, but also the different states. So you can set a hover color, but there's also an active color. So if I click and hold, that's the active state on this button. And again, it's being set to our secondary teal color. So the CSS code that I have over here, this resets it to our contrast color, which is our red for that active state. And then the first thing here is this WP site blocks padding is zero. If we jump into here, I don't know if you noticed it because it's kind of hard to see with the light background image we have, but there's white space up at the top here and at the bottom. So I wanted to get rid of that. I couldn't figure out how to do it with the visual editor. So I'm resetting the padding to zero and that'll give us full coverage of our background image. So it butts up against the browser window instead of giving us that white space. So let me go ahead and copy and paste this code here. And I'm going to paste it into this additional CSS section. I'm going to paste this plain text. That gets rid of the white space. And now when I'm clicking on this button, I don't see any color changes there. If you wanted to, you could set the hover color the same way through CSS code. That could be a little homework for you if you'd like to do that. And let me jump into the About page and see if our link is fixed. Yep, there it is. Now we could also go into the Contact page and see what that looks like. And you can see all the customizations. I'm not going to go through them line by line, but I obviously made it to match this website. So let's publish these changes. And that concludes this tutorial. Now, as you saw throughout this tutorial, the WordPress full site editing unlocks a lot of capabilities, but it is still in its infancy. There are a few of the bugs that we saw today. I'm sure there's certain features that they're going to continue to add as new WordPress versions are released. It really helps to understand the entire WordPress ecosystem. And to help you do that, I put together a free WordPress training. You can check that out at websiteprofitcourse.com slash WP101. Now, if you enjoy working with WordPress the same way that I did and want to take your skills and start freelancing, grab my cheat sheet, 15 tools to start your web design business. 
You can find that on my homepage, websiteprofitcourse.com. And that includes the premium theme that I use, which is Divi. They kind of solved the WordPress full site editing problem. So they got more features than what WordPress currently offers. And recently I switched over pretty much all of my personal websites and client websites to Divi. So if you want to check out that along with a bunch of other tools, grab that cheat sheet. All of these links that I mentioned today will be in the description below, including the one page tutorial guide if you want to recreate what we went through today. Last but not least, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you have any problems along the way, you got any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm interested in your experience with full site editing and whether you're new to WordPress and just learning it, or if you're a longtime WordPress user and you're getting used to it from the old system. And lastly, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can see all future WordPress tutorials and web design freelancing videos. Thanks for making it to the end, and I'll link up a few other videos here if you want to keep on learning.